Okay, okay. <laughs> How we doing, guys? Come on, uh, it's Sunday night, so we're gonna do some Instagram live. It's a little bit, a little bit dark. Yeah, it is. Yeah, what if we get a? I don't know. Oh, that's better. That's better. Hey, cause do, do you want a camera? Camera right here. Yeah. All right. Mm, doesn't make much difference. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Don't air my daddy like <laughs> Oh no. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. How we doing, guys? All right, so is that better, everyone? Can you guys hear? Okay, okay. So, Eddie san, yokuso, yokuso. We're gonna do a little bit of a, a, a special video today with special guest Atsu. Atsu. Hey, how's it going? All right, guys. Okay. So, yeah, so. Oh, according to you from Japan, that's pretty cool. So, uh, to start off the video, we'll just do a quick introduction of ourselves. Yeah, so let me do a quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Atsu, and I've got a YouTube channel called Atsu Ego where I share my tips around how to study English most effectively and efficiently. And I started the channel about five years ago uh, when I was studying at a grad school. Now I graduated from the grad school and working for one of the accounting firms in Melbourne. So, hope you guys enjoy this live streaming. Yep, enjoy. So yeah, Atsu is also Filming the video as well. We got a second camera in the background. So uh, after this is finished, we're going to uh, post the video on YouTube as well. So make sure to check out Atsu's YouTube channel. I'll give you a link to his Instagram now. So I'll put it in the comments with Atsu Ego. And you guys can check that out. Check that out. All right. And uh, while I'm doing that, how about I do a little bit of a, an introduction as well, hey? Yep. So, because we're also doing the YouTube video. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right, guys. So, everyone, uh, my name is Rupa, or you, people call me Rupa Sensei. And... I uh, basically used to be an English teacher in Japan for one year. So, And that was pretty fun. It was on a working holiday. And then after I came back, uh, I started making little videos on Instagram. So, so just like a one minute, nice and easy idioms and slang that you can use in your normal conversation and that should be good for you, for you guys to, to learn. All right, and I just had a brilliant idea. I've got a computer and we're going to use it as a light. How about that? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it out. Let's try it out. All right, guys, it's a little bit dark, so yeah, we'll see if, see if this works. And also... But anyway, how are you guys going anyway? Oh, you, you got a light. Okay. Let's try that. Let's try that out. Do you have a USB socket? Yeah, I do. That's fortunate. All right, guys. So wait a minute. And where's the USB socket? Uh, I got to use the All right. adapter. That's annoying. Hey. <laughs> Hope it works. Yeah. Hope it works. All right, guys. Is this going to be better? Damn. Oh. Maybe put on our face. There we go. Much better, better. better. Much better. <laughs> hey, okay, much better, much better. Okay, so let's start like this. So, so everyone, uh, maybe we'll need to switch the angle of that, eh? Angle of the camera? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're ready to go, ready to go. Fantastic. So we got the YouTube camera set up and we got the, the Instagram going now. Everything's perfect, so let's start. So now that we've both introduced ourselves, Minasan, YouTube, hello. <laughs> so guys, thanks so much for coming. Moi, taksan kiwastene. So, so how many people are watching? How can we tell? Up here. How many? Ah, oh, okay. So we got 80, 81. Thank you guys. How are we doing? Sounds good. Yeah. So everyone, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about three key factors. Yeah, for you guys things. to learn English. Hmm. Does everyone want to know what those are? Mesan shiritai. Eigo no mitsu no daiji na koto. 
Okay. Yes, of course you do. Yeah, of course you do. So, how about you introduce one of the your ones? What what My you ones. like to what you like to focus on? Right. Um, so I think there are mainly three things that are quite critical in English learning. And so the very first thing that you have to be very careful about is the selection of English material. So you have to buy a quality English material and where you learn English and who you learn English from. Uh, that's quite critical. So English itself, like how you learn English and the source of the knowledge, that's quite critical. So that's the very first thing, right? And the second thing I believe very important to know is your motivation, like how you keep your motivation. Motivation. Yeah, motivation is definitely one of the largest factors that you have to understand and also tackle in learning English effectively and efficiently. So that's the second factor. And the third factor is, or is the third factor? The third factor is the, so what have we talked about? We've talked about motivation, motivation, English materials. and the English materials. The last one is the method. Exactly. Okay. So how you actually study English. Yes. So learning methodology, which is pretty much what I've done uh, using my YouTube channel. So if many of you guys have already uh, watched my videos, you probably may already know, but I've shared a lot of tips around, for example, how to effectively memorize vocabulary. Uh, you want me to speak quite a little slower, so, well, um, on my YouTube channel, I think I've shared a lot of tips about how to learn English. Oh, so, right. for example, how to memorize vocabulary, how to learn grammar, how to improve your pronunciation, and that kind of stuff, right? So, all those methods, of course, have to be tailored for each individual because mm, each individual everyone's is different. different. Mm. So, it has to be tailored a little bit, but there are some fundamentals that you need to know in order to kind of plan out right? And yep. how you can better tackle uh, your solutions. So that's what I've done so far on my YouTube channel. And he is uh, in charge of, I think, boosting your motivation yep. on his Instagram. So I think that's how we decided to do a collaboration yeah. because he's in charge of one of the factors I believe quite important. And I'm doing one of those, which is English learning methodology. Yep. So that's how we kind of came up with this idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, before we talk about motivation, uh, we'll, we'll tell a, an interesting story about how we decided to, to do a collab. So, actually, Atsu was getting a, a haircut. <laughs> getting a haircut? Yeah, by your, your barber. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, so, Atsu's barber yeah, right. yeah, knew, knew me, and Atsu wanted to start doing more Instagram. So, mm. uh, Atsu, from now on, he's going to be doing a lot of a lot more English studying on Instagram, okay? Teaching English there, okay. so make sure to check that out as well. And that's basically how we started it all. Hmm. And so let's talk about the second point. So now that we've talked about methodology, yep. let's talk about motivation, motivation, okay? Motivation, some of that, boom. <laughs> so guys, motivation, I believe, is one of the key factors to doing just about everything, okay? Whether you want to get more fit, okay? Be better at sports or be better at English and studying stuff like that. It all comes down to motivation because the, like, uh, you can be super smart, you can be a genius, but if you don't have the motivation to really want to succeed, you're not going to really push yourself, okay? So, I always like, um, one of the quotes that I really like is that, you know, a genius will be good, but a hard worker will be great. That's because a genius, they eventually lose kind of their motivation. They don't want to push themselves anymore. But if you're, if you, if you started from zero, you know, you get people telling you all the time, oh, you're not so good, you can never learn English, that keeps you motivated, okay? So then you're going to want to study and study more, and that's going to basically bring you up on that higher level than a genius. So you don't need to be a genius, you just need to work hard, okay? And, well, okay, so I speak up a little bit because not many people <laughs> probably were able to hear me clearly, and also I try to speak a bit more slower. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so when it comes to motivation, 
I don't think there is a way to really、um, keep your motivation without having a clear objective.、Mm. So having a clear objective becomes the biggest driver、yeah. for your motivation. That's the way you keep your momentum. That's how you give impetus to your English learning.、Yep. So many people say, hey, this is a way, there are so many methods or ways that you can use to increase your confidence, increase your motivation. But I don't think there is such a thing. Well,、yep. in my opinion, what's critical is you have a crystal clear objective. 100%.、Right? So, for example, in my case, when I was a、um, university student in Japan, I had a clear cut objective of learning English. Which was to go to Australia and study, graduate from the ANU,、uh, mm. Australian National University, and then get a degree with distinction. So,、mm. you know what distinction means?、Yep. So, distinction means like you graduate with, high, high、uh, level. Yeah, with great grades, right? And then after graduation, I grasp an opportunity to work for an accounting firm here in Australia. So, that was my objective. That was a goal that I wanted to achieve after putting in the hires and learn English. Right? Of course, my English is not perfect yet.、Yeah. I don't think I'm still well, as good as a native speaker when it comes to English speaking, but I think I've got to a level at the minimum to、yeah. be able to compete with native speakers、yeah. for for sure. um, here in Australia.、Right? So, that objective, that clear goal,、mm. my passion to work in a foreign country, my willingness to work in a foreign country in the future. Was definitely a big driver.、Yep. So, of course, there were a lot of like ups and downs, right? Yeah, in my for English、sure. learning journey. Well, I don't feel like studying today, for example. Well, there's a massive downer when I get a like really low score, you know, on the TOEIC or TOEFL or whatever, which you guys are quite passionate about in Japan. Um, but um, having that objective actually kept me、um, stay motivated. Yeah. Right?、Uh, so, Well, so that is definitely、um, one of the best a d v i c e I could give you.、Mm. Um, motivation is driven by your objective, by your goals. Yeah. So, so don't be like,、uh, I can't keep my motivation.、Mm. Uh, I will watch, for example, a d s e s video and then I get motivated again. Well, that could be、uh, in the short run effective, but in the long run, it's not effective.、Mm. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself. What you want to do after、uh, becoming capable of speaking English? Like, what are you trying to achieve out of learning English? That you have to ask yourself. Yep, fantastic. fantastic. Okay, so hit the、Mo、nail on the head there. Motor answer. Hit that in the head on the head on the head. So, everyone, just to recap, you've got to have a goal, okay? And you've got to have that goal to be, we like to say, smart goals in English. So, smart goals means. You know, something that's specific, okay, so it's detailed, and then it's measurable. So, something that you can, you can kind of look at, you can, you can track yourself, see how you're going, and then it's achievable. So, something that you can, you can really do, and then、uh, you want it to be、um, uh, also time bound. So, have your goal, and then set a deadline. Okay, a deadline is like、mm. the last day that you want to do it. So, for example, if you say, okay, I want to、uh, be able to speak at this level, you know, have it on a date. And I think, you know, for both of us, we both lived in different countries, and I think that's what really motivated us. So, before,、uh, when I was in high school, of course, I, I studied Japanese, but then when I found out that After high school, I was going to work in Japan. That's when I started to get really motivated to study Japanese. And that's when I, I studied more and more and more. And then eventually I could. That's because I had the motivation. So, everyone, have a goal in English, okay? And write it down, you know, put it on your wall, and then, you know, look at it every day. And then you gotta always ask, you know, Okay, how far am I away? And don't be afraid to set your goals high because、uh, well, we, have a, we have one phrase, okay, in English. One phrase, it's called aim,、uh, shoot for the stars. Shoot for the stars, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, if you miss, oh no, no, shoot for the moon. If you miss, at least you're going to be 
up in the stars. Okay, so have a high goal. And then even if you don't achieve it, you're still going to be quite high. Okay, if you just set a low goal, okay, so a small goal, and you achieve it, mm -hmm. it's not, you, you, you're not really doing your full potential. But if you have a, a high goal, okay, if you set your goals really high, and then you don't achieve it, you're still going to be at this level. And that's much better than down here. So have a stretch goal here. Yeah, stretch so goal. I like to have long-term goals and then short-term goals. So, you know, have your goals for every day, have your goals for the week, but then also have your goals for, for 10 years, 5 years. Okay, what do I want to achieve in English, you know, today? Okay, maybe I will uh, have a look at one of the past exams. Maybe I'm going to study 15 idioms. But then also have your goal for the one year. Your one year goal might be, okay, I want to get, you know, Eiken Daichi, you know, something like that. So long, long term goals and short term goals. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get your motivation up. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So now that we've talked about the method and then motivation. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about some English materials. English materials. Yeah, okay. just do a, a quick, quick one of like what you kind of used to, to study. Mm. Well, I think I've already shared a lot of materials that I use in my English studies on my website, yep. and also on my YouTube channel. So you can refer to those videos and articles uh, if you want to know what I use for my English studies. Well, if I could take a chance to maybe talk about the book yeah. that I published. Why, why, don't you, why don't you bring out the book? Oh, yeah. So Atsu, you know. He's a pretty busy guy. He, he has a full-time job and then he also does the YouTube. He's doing Instagram now, but he also... So I published a book called yeah. Distinction. So, well, this book contains... Well, I don't really want to kind of make it like an advertisement. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, published the book the other day and that contains a lot of like frequently used yeah. expressions and actually shooting for the stars. Shooting for the stars That's inside. inside the book. Yeah. So everyone, he uses some really good phrases, you know, some ones that we actually use. So, hey guys, if you want to, you know, have a really good resource to, to study English, mm -hmm. hey, might, maybe go check out his book. It's really cool. <laughs> Because I think, well, one of the biggest gaps, so one, mm. of, uh, one of the factors that's causing the significant gap between uh, Japanese English learners and native speakers is the word selection, yeah. or expression selection. So I think words he use is quite different sometimes yeah. uh, from what, you know, Japanese English learners use uh, in an English speaking um, situation. Yeah. So I just wanted to uh, fill the gap or I wanted to create a material so that is why I decided to make a book myself mm. and I think well, hopefully uh, this makes a difference in your English for sure for sure mm. yeah because if you if you just study you know like TOEIC um, exam textbook stuff like that you're gonna learn a lot of English but you're not going to learn a lot of the the natural phrases, yeah, that, colloquial, yeah, colloquial slang stuff yeah. like that. So slang, yeah. yeah. So that's why Atsu wrote the book, and you know that's that's why a lot of people are becoming a lot more successful in English, you mm. know, through the book. So definitely go check that out. You can check it on your website, right? Yes, atsuego.com. Mm -hmm. All right, so guys, have a look at that afterwards. I'll also check out his Instagram. YouTube, a lot of awesome videos on there, on, on his YouTube especially. All right, so now that we've, we've talked about the, the three key yep. factors, just a quick recap. You want, your, recap. you want your English materials, okay, so have good materials. Then you want to have a good method to study English. Mm. And then lastly, you want to keep motivated. Yep. Those three things. Yep. And you'll be successful in English. Mm, as soon as you have those three things, stars are aligned. Yeah, right? the, the stars are aligned, okay? So that means you're, you're ready for success. Mm. All right, so now that we've talked about that, and also, guys, we had a lot of, um, we had a lot of uh, comments. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a Q&A at the end. Okay, so for the last 30 minutes or 20 minutes, mm -hmm. we'll answer everyone's questions. Yeah. And we're reading them now, so we got a, a lot of ones saved up. <laughs> yep. So thanks so much for the comments so far. 
but we'll answer your questions at the end. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we'll talk about next, how about we talk a little bit about, you know, what got us started, you know, a little bit about our backgrounds, because what I like to think is, you know, everyone watches these videos yeah. and, and things like that, but a lot of them don't really know much about us as persons, as people. Okay. So, so how about you just do a little quick introduction of like why you why you started, why I started yeah your, your um, YouTube and things like that. Uh, good question. Well, so I started YouTube not really to teach English, but also, uh, but but to um, practice speaking English at yeah. first. So the very first time I posted a video was I. I think when I was around 19 years old. Yeah. So now I'm 28 years old. Okay. So about like nine, <laughs> nine years, years ago. Nine wow. Nine years ago. So when I was really fresh. Yeah. Okay. So I posted a video about, um, that was about uh, learning Japanese. Yeah. So I talked about like how uh, you should speak Japanese. Oh. Or, like, well, what sort of things that you need to be uh, careful about when speaking mm. Japanese to Japanese people or something oh, like that. Interesting. And the reason I started that was I wanted to have an opportunity to um, speak English yeah. because at that time I was living in Sapporo. So Sapporo is the capital of Hokkaido. Hokkaido. In the Sapporo. Of Japan. Sapporo beer. Have you been there? Very good. No, I've never been there. Never been there. But I drink the Sapporo beer. Sapporo yeah. Beer. That's more than enough, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So I'm originally from there and I was living there. And, you know, there are not many foreigners there. There are not many English speakers walking around in the city. It's not like Tokyo, right? So I was struggling to find a chance to speak English. And then I found out that there was such a great platform that was YouTube. So YouTube. I was like, oh, I might as well post a video talking in English and I probably get a lot of comments around my English or the content or, you know, things that I was talking about on YouTube and then posted a video and then you know, that kind of, you know, was the starting point, right? Yep. So it was for the purpose of really practicing my English, not really for the purpose of teaching or sharing my tips to Japanese English learners. Mm. But um, at some point in time, um, when I was uh, studying uh, at, the, at the ANU, so in Canberra, yep. right, in, here in Australia, um, that was after spending a fair bit of time on studying English, maybe about Maybe about four years had already passed Damn, you know, since yeah. I started learning well. English. And obviously, well, I came across a lot of difficulties yep. learning English, right? So yeah. how to pronounce um, English words and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I think I was, you know, able to manage to uh, get down to uh, the fundamentals yep. of learning English. And then I thought, hey, uh, if I change my a policy and start posting uh, English related videos that could be quite helpful for English learners in Japan. Yeah. And then I started posting videos again and again and again and now um, it's managed to um, it's good. Yeah, get to 100,000 <laughs> subscribers yeah. and well I think I over. Show you. Oh. Um, yeah, they have got a Oh my present. god. Yeah, big present from uh, YouTube. I wow. have I have an unboxed. Oh this. my god. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is a silver button. Yeah. Yeah, the silver, yeah, silver button. Yeah, so I'm going to unbox this and you know shoot a video of it later, but Yeah. Uh, yeah, so make well, sure to watch that. Yeah, that's how I Check out his it. channel. Channel Toro could shoot they could have say. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's how I started. My yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting that you say that because me too, I started doing these videos mm. when I was 19 as well. When so, you were 19? Yeah. Okay, two so, years ago, was it? Yeah, two years ago. Mm. Uh, a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, because I, I just turned 21. Yeah. Right. Because uh, I was an English teacher uh, in Japan when I was 18. Okay. So I did uh, um, an ALT from 18 to 19 and then about halfway through um, when I was 19 and a half I came back to Australia and I still wanted to teach English okay I really loved my job in Japan but my visa ended so I still wanted to teach a lot of English to people especially Japanese because I think you know it's very needed over there there's a lot of high demand 
So, yep. yeah, so, mm. so I thought, well, why don't I keep teaching English on social media? Okay, things like, uh, at the time, Instagram was, you know, it was so awesome. I really love Instagram. So I thought, hey, why don't I do an English video every day? Mm. Okay, and then it's also a challenge for me. You know, it helps me increase my motivation. And just like you said, you, you also uh, practice the English that you... Oh, the, for me, it was Japanese. So I got to practice Japanese. I uh, actually got to practice English when he uh, explained the Japanese. Yep. So, yeah. So that's, that's why I started as well. Yep. And, yeah, it, it, it's, it's going pretty well. It's, it's really fun. I've managed to do it every day. Mm. Even, you know, days when my voice is crazy. Yeah. You are so committed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think you've got to have that commitment. And that's also what I want to show, show you guys as well that, mm. you know, if you want to do something big, if you want to do something like, you know, learn English fluently, you got to be committed. Exactly. You, too many people, they just do it for 30 days and then they quit. Okay. They say it's too hard, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, I studied hard in English for one week and then they wonder why they're not fluent. Mm. No, it takes a very long time. Yeah. Today was video number 485. That's crazy. Days in a row, so yeah. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah, mm. so that's what I want to teach you guys as well. Not just English, yeah. but about hard work, mm. work ethic as well. Work ethic is how hard you work. Mm. And it's a very important thing for mm. you know, success in, in your yeah. everything. Career, English studies, if you want a good Good body, you know, you, you need it. Yeah, if you, if you do gym, you can't just go to gym for one week and then, you know, expect to look like a bodybuilder, mm. okay? You got to go five, day, five times a week for three years and then you start getting, you know, good, good body, good results. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so now that we've talked right. a bit about yeah, so. our history... History. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, I think it's great. Uh, you're showing by your attitude that is very important to commit yourself yeah. to doing a thing. And obviously you've shown, you've proved yourself that, well, committing mm. to the thing that you want to achieve definitely makes it come true. And obviously you were successful on Instagram. You've got a lot of followers. Mm. And I think, well, yeah, that's just amazing i think so yeah. well i think you've done pretty well and yeah that's what i really want to do as well uh, not only by teaching but also by really you know doing kind of kind of materializing uh the ideas i have and stuff and obviously distinction is like one of the things that i've done so far yeah uh, to show like committing myself to uh, doing or achieving one thing is quite um important mm, so for that, sure yeah, for sure so, well, and also the topic, I think, comes back to the point that um, having motivation is yeah. really important. And I think you had a clear objective mm, clear uh, goal. in keeping a post in the video. So, for example, your short-term goal mm. was to post a video every yeah. single day. Every single day, right? So that was your short-term goal. Yeah, the short-term. But the long-term goal is, for example, you know, opening a school. Yeah. And also keep much more value mm. into the society after kind of, you know, establishing a framework yeah. by doing an Instagram. And so it's all, you know, it's not just a lot of dots. Mm. All the dots are connected. Connected. Right? Yeah. Long-term, mid-term, and uh, short-term, mid-term, and long-term. Long-term. All those... Dots it's a line and now there is a clear line yeah you know, going to the objective that you want to achieve so for sure yeah it's a beautiful thing and i think you know a lot of people are already doing it but if you feel like well i'm not motivated enough to keep doing this maybe think about it that way mm. Right? Mm. think about your your long-term goals so you know have that short-term goal what you're going to do every day and then you know think about okay uh, well, maybe after I do that, uh, maybe I'll get a job overseas. But then after that, what are you going to do? Okay, why do you want to get that job overseas? Okay, well, I can you know, practice more English, you know, earn a good income, meet a lot of friends. And then what about after that? You know, what about after, after 10 years? Oh, that's much better, hey? <laughs> what about after 10 years of, of you know, living overseas? What are you going to do then? So 
that's just you know general life advice so that goes for for everything not just english so you know always think long term as well yeah japanese <laughs> yeah. yeah good question so yeah so always think long term as well so you know maybe in the future you want to you know travel the world and you know english is going to be a very useful tool then mm. so you have to think long term so everyone promise me that you'll think long term do your best <laughs> mm. all right so how about you talk a little bit about you know actually working overseas so working overseas. yeah so i think a lot <clears> of you guys you know you you learn english hard every day or you, you watch these videos and you get motivated you see uh, you see me in you know melbourne city melbourne central yesterday mm. just in the middle there and yeah you think okay whoa what would it actually be like uh, working overseas so working overseas yeah what do you mm. think about that well as a person coming from a foreign country or japan which has a totally different culture from Australian culture. Yeah. It takes a bit of time to settle differences. Right? Yeah. You have to reconcile yourself uh, with a different culture. That takes a fair bit of time. Yeah. And that with the way things are done, that's totally different. And the way you approach things that's totally different. Mm. So for example, Japan is a bit more rule based. Yep. So people are much more by the book. Yeah. Right? So you for have sure. like all the manuals and you have to go through all the steps in order to get approval mm. and then finally you can take action. Yeah. And also if there is a high possibility of failure, you don't wanna take the action. So that's yep. uh, I think Japanese way. It's not like you're correct or wrong, right? Mm. There is no I think correct or wrong in the way uh, we approach things, but it's just different. And here in Australia, for example, uh, it's much more principle based. Yep. And you look at the substance of the matter, and yep. if it's deviating from the rule you have, that's okay as long as um, as long as it can have a positive impact on the uh, on your uh, on the work or task that you were trying to achieve. For sure. So um, that's. That's sort of a different aspect, and it, it's great to have this opportunity to learn, you know, how you can slice the same thing differently. Yeah. Right? How you slice and dice is a little different. So that's definitely a great learning opportunity for me. And, well, in Australia, well, there are a number of types of people having different backgrounds. Yeah. Right? So I think you're like half... Maybe yeah. like quarter Italian. And yeah. You've got a lot of like Indian, different... Italian, Aussie. Aussie. Yeah. yeah. So you've got like a lot, a lot of like a different cultural yeah. backgrounds, right? And my firm, our company is the same, right? So I've got a number of people coming from China, Hong Kong, uh, India, and also uh, some, there are a couple of French people as well. Yeah. And some people are from the UK, and a lot of them were, of course, uh, are, of course, from Australia. Yeah. And, well, what else? Well, there are a number of countries or, you know, a number of sort of like, what's it called? Like a multicultural, multicultural, you know, you know yeah. elements involved in the type of work, mm. right? in, in the working environment. And well, here's a, well, this is definitely the best environment to mm. uh, develop a skill uh, to work or collaborate with people having different ways of thinking. Yeah. Because if you work for a Japanese company, for example, and if you only deal with Japanese customers, you only know one way, right? One way of doing things. Yeah. But here you deal with a number of different types of people and you flexibly change the way you tackle mm. the, uh, the, task, the problem. Because the, the problem, you right? have a lot of different sources, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. a lot of different opinions, different cultures. Mm. So here is a great, great sort of environment where you can establish foundation for being quite agile. Yep, if for that sure. makes sense. Yeah. So I think that's something that I really value mm. working for a firm here in Australia. Yeah. So yeah, that's the point I want to make. Yeah, for sure. You know, because if you, if you only stay in Japan, you know, you're probably going to, to think just very kind of single-mindedly, we say, single-minded. Single-minded. Yeah, it means you, you only know one way how to do things. But, you know, if you travel, you, you work with people from different countries, different cultures, you open your mind, okay? You broaden your horizons and you learn 
more ways to do things.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so for example, the Japanese way of of doing accounting or of doing business might be different from the Australian way, different from the Indian way, different from the Chinese way.、Yep. So you know that's why traveling overseas、mm-hmm. and. It, That's especially why I love Melbourne,、mm. because Melbourne is so diverse.、Mm. It's got a lot of different cultures,、mm. so so you know you can learn very fast.、Yep. You can you can meet so many different people.、Mm. Yeah, and we can say the same thing for English as well. Yep. Right. So in Japan, I believe a lot of people think American English is the English. Yeah.、Right? So that's the standard English. Standard. All the other types of English, like Australian English, British English, Canadian English, very much the same. But like Indian English, like all the different、uh, types of English, are sort of like deviation or derivatives、yeah. of American English, and they may not be considered like standard. And like all, not all, but like a lot of people in Japan are after American English. Yeah. But like as soon as You go abroad and、mm. start working for an international company in an international environment. Yeah, it's not just American English that is spoken. Yeah, right. So it's well, all know, of them. Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. Them. it's all connected, yeah. right? Even yeah, even Chinese English. Yeah, yeah, like Pidgin English. I、yeah. don't know what's the term for it, but、um, well, English spoken by non-native speakers. That's、mm. also something that you have to understand in doing business. Well, sure. Of course, not everyone will be involved in business, but if you want to kind of get by in this international environment,、yeah. in this globalized world, for sure. Well, not only American English is English. Yeah.、Right? yeah. So I think you have to have the mindset as well. Yeah.、Mm. Yeah. You just got to have an always have an open mind. Be be willing to try new things. Be willing to learn new things, and be willing. To do new things, okay.、Mm. Don't just be so straightforward. Don't just always do the same thing. You know, eat the same food, talk to the same people, use the same language, do the same job. Try lots of different things. You know, that's、um, that's one thing I like to do is just try something new every day. You know, whether it's a, a new type of food, you know, you you might eat. And that way, you you learn a little bit about、mm. different cultures and and、mm. things like that. So yeah, especially if you guys live in you live in Melbourne. Or sorry, that's just my nightlight came on. There we go. <laughs> Should turn back on. All right. So yeah,、uh, especially if you guys live in Melbourne, you're very lucky because so many different cultures, a lot of opportunities for you.、Mm. So that's why I recommend you guys. Come over to Melbourne, best place in the world. <laughs> maybe, maybe. All right, guys. So we got about we got about twenty minutes left. Um. So at the end of the twenty minutes, so we got about twenty minutes left、uh, of the of the Instagram live. So from now on, we've kind of covered the topics that we want to talk about. Anything else? No, I think that is. So how about you talk a little bit about your event coming up? All right. So I'm having an event in association with. This book distinction on the 17th of November in Melbourne.、Yep. So if you are living in Melbourne or other cities in Australia like Sydney, close to Melbourne, relatively, you can just fly over. Yeah. Or even take a bus, probably. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, you can take the <laughs> night bus. Yeah. Yeah, but if you could join the event, maybe we can take a chance to talk with each other and. I really wanted to take a chance to kind of better understand problems that you are coming across in your English studies. So, if you could come over, that would be great. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So,、okay. with that being said, let's start the Q and A. Okay. So from now on, type a question into the right here comment little box there, and we'll answer it. Uh, if it's a Japanese question, you know we'll answer it in Japanese. We'll answer in Japanese. Yeah, yeah. If it's an English question,、um, you know we'll answer it in English, and then maybe Japanese as well. We'll see. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll、like tr- yep. Yeah, keep it like that. We had a couple、uh, questions that I've that I've remembered. They just want to know: Are you are you Japanese? We had that yes, question a lot. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Japanese. Of course. Yeah, yeah. As we as we said, he's from Sapporo.、Mm. So you know, Sapporo beer, oishine. 
looking 100% Japanese, right? Some people say I look like Korean, though. Korean, okay. Mm. Maybe a little bit. No, I think I think Japanese. Okay. Yeah, and、um, we had a couple of questions. Am I really 21? Represents a hundred and twenty. Need you inside this car? Do you have a driver's license? Yeah, maybe、me? I have to pull out, <laughs> pull out my driver's license. I don't even have a driver's license yet, but I have a.、Um, oh, you don't? No, I have a learner's. Oh, oh okay. Mara, naika unten menke o chanto marate nai kero. I've got learner's seat. Oh, learner's seat. <laughs> We're still learner drivers. Yeah, learner's brothers. Yeah, learner brothers. Say、so、always be learning. <laughs> never, you never mastered it. <laughs> so hey, where is it? Oh, back here. 97 means、um, so that's 11th means November and then 97 so kuji nana nen amarita hontoni nijuri sai da yo yeah so guys、um, yeah and I just want to also say thanks so much for all the happy birthday messages、um, yeah thank you thank you it was really fun actually yesterday was my birthday party so right now I'm actually a little bit sleepy because I. Hey, drank a little bit too much. You know, just a nami suke da kero. Can't make my show now. And yeah, so that was really fun. Thanks so much for all your messages, all your comments. And yeah, let's have a let's make it a good year until I'm 22.、Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So yeah,、uh, thanks for a lot of comments. Let's scroll back and then we'll just start answering them. Oh, ticket is how much? For your. えー、とチケットは50ドルオーストラリア50ドルで、えー、とこの本の値段も含んでるんで、はい、それで50ドルです。OK、そういうこと as well, right? Yes。Yeah、you get the book、which the book is normally 40 bucks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah.、So、it's like 42, 3 dollars normal. Yeah、so. so hey, you're getting an event for like 8 dollars, that's pretty cool.、Mm-hmm. All right、uh, Will this video be posted on YouTube? Absolutely. Yes, We got a You can't see it, guys, but we got a YouTube camera on the back.、Mm-hmm. And yeah,、um, Atsu is going to post that on his YouTube channel.、Yep. I'll give you a, a link to, to you, Atsu's Instagram, and then you guys can. I posted it before, but let's put it on again.、Uh, so you guys you. can check out his Instagram later, and then I guess you'll, you'll post the, on your story or something when you,、sure. when you upload your. A、uh, YouTube video. Yeah, why not? Oh, oh, what happened here? That's a go. That's a go. Okay. Oh, good. Perfect. All right. Pin comment. Okay, okay. Perfect. All right. So, hey, oh, many, many questions. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, after that, let's.、Um, are you going to sell Distinction at the store? No, not planning to yet. Okay.、Uh, yeah, hopefully someday. Mm. Mm. Okay. But so far,、uh, it's going to be only available online. Online, online. So、mm-hmm. make sure to get your, get your ticket online. Oh, okay. Good question from Hiromi1110.、Um, How do I improve pronunciation in English? That's what you're in charge of. Yeah,、right? yeah. <laughs> so, you know, definitely try and look at native speakers, look at their mouth, look at their, you know, where their lips are. You can also study phonetics. Okay, phonetics, phonetics. being yeah, how we pronounce letters. Do you know phonetics? Yeah. Phonetics, Hatsun Kigo. Hatsun Kigo. It's called Hatsun Kigo. Hatsun Kigo, ne. And you know where to place your tongue. For example, you know R and L, L and R. Okay, so L, your tongue hits the, hits your teeth, hits the roof of your mouth for R, R, Rupa. The tongue doesn't do anything. So, L and R, stuff、mm. like that.、Mm. You can really practice your pronunciation.、Yeah. Otherwise, just listen and repeat, and then you know, track it with something. You know, ask your friend,、oh, okay, how did this sound? Say it, make sure that they're strict on you, and yeah, practice it that way. Any other advice for pronunciation? Pronunciation, yeah, like you said, I think, I think learning phonetics. Phonetics, yep.、Yeah. Yeah, that's quite critical because、mm. when you open a dictionary, for example, all、yeah. the words are written in phonetics.、I、yeah. It's good to master those phonetics first. Yeah.、And、there are a lot of good videos for free、yeah. on YouTube. For sure. So I think you can refer to them as well. Yeah. So, for example, my、um, recommendation or my go to videos are 
uh, from Rachel's English. Have you? Rachel's English. Yeah, so she's American. Okay. She does a lot of videos around phonetics and how to pronounce words and you know when and where reduction, flapping, mm. and those yep. phenomena happened. Yeah. So yeah, she has a number of great videos. So I think uh, it's gonna right. be your go-to as well. Shout out to Rachel's English. Top top videos. Mm. Yeah, and practice your pronunciation. Okay. Hey there. I'm Visitor English. Says. メルボンの一番のおすすめの場所はどこですか。どこですか。おお、めい。マイフェイバリットプレイスインメルボンメルボンに行っちゃい。一番好きな場所は多分ビクトリアステートライブラリー。オッケー。で、図書館。そう、イ
Mm. And I'll do some work there. I'll do some homework. I'll do some studying then. I'll, I like to often read like, you know, like self-development business books. And then, you know, I'll get to work, do that until 5 p.m. Mm. Or, or school until, the, in fo- until 5. And then after that, there's still, what, five more hours until you go to sleep. So in those five hours, what are you doing? Okay. Yeah. Too many people, they just finish work and then they go to sleep. Okay, but you know, that's a long time. Mm-hmm. You can do a lot of things. You can do gym, you can study then, you can do an A Kaiba class. Mm, probably yeah. this person works though. Yeah, yeah especially in Japan, it's tough. Mm. So, yeah, so my our best advice would probably be on the train, try and do as much as you can. Yeah, just out of curiosity, like how much time do you spend on studying Japanese? On Japanese? Day? Actually, yeah, I do. Mainly my Japanese study through these videos. Right. So okay. I, I get to do two birds, one stone. Mm. So it's mm. sekinicho. Mm. So I, I practice Japanese. And then while I'm doing my subtitles, yep. I'll learn some new kanji. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, when I'm, I'm practicing, like, mm. uh, okay, how do I translate this mm. colloquial phrase mm. into a Japanese? Mm. I'll, I'll learn then. Mm. And then, you know, I might, you know, um, watch a YouTube video. Okay, how about I watch a Japanese YouTube video? So mm. always try it and, you know, do two things at once. Mm. So well, no, yeah. Apparently your Japanese learning has been already routinized. Yeah, yeah. You know, in your life. Yeah, so the, that right. way, you know, it doesn't even feel like I'm studying. It mm-hmm. just feels like I'm doing my normal everyday activities. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little painful at first. But yeah. Like once you get routinized, yeah. like you don't feel it like any pain or that kind of sure. fatigue or anything out of nah, it. No, mm. it just feels like a, just feels like brushing a teeth, you know? <laughs> you just wake up, you just brush your teeth. Yeah. You know, it's just a normal thing. You mm. know, you don't question it. After a while, these things become that. Mm. Mm. Okay, good mm. questions. Uh, Atsu-san, being in such a different culture, do you find living or working in Japan is boring and difficult? Well, you, you've never... Never worked in Japan. Yeah. Uh, well, I think after adapting myself to this culture, yeah. I think it gets a little hard to go back to Japanese culture and yeah. re-adapt myself to Japanese For culture sure. again, right? So, well, I wouldn't say it's going to be boring. I think there are a lot of challenging opportunities there, and I think it's much more yeah. fast-paced there. Yep. So in terms of the growth speed, yep. it may be faster there. So that's a positive side of it, mm. if you look on the bright side, yep. right? But, um, well, I'm pretty happy here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well stay here. Well, or, stay in Melbourne. Maybe go to a different country, but yeah. not Japan. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Good plan, good plan. All right, you're going to have to help me out with this kanji here. So, Australia, then. Shushoku. Shushoku, okay. Job, job finding, yep, job, job hunting. searching, job hunting, yeah. Yep. Well, muzukashi desu ka? Mm. Well, what is? well, I think it depends what job you want to do. You know, you, it might be easy to work at a Japanese restaurant <laughs> or something like that. But then being a, an accountant in mm. Deloitte, hey, that might be a bit of a more difficult, you know, job, job to find. Mm. So, yeah, so. The, the biggest, the hardest part is visa. The visa. Right? Yeah, you need to secure a work visa, which is. Like getting harder and harder mm. every year. Yep. So that's the hardest part. But once you you know get over that, I think it's gonna be like quite easy. Like as yeah. long as you have a decent English skill. Yep. And also probably qualification depending upon where you wanna go. Like for instance, if you wanna become an accountant, mm. you need to have an accountant qualification yeah. like CA, CPA. Yep. But if you have that and if you can speak English and if you can get over the visa the, problem, yeah. then you're you good can, to go. Yeah, you're ready to go. Yeah, so big, lots of work at the start, but after that, not so hard. Mm. So yeah, work hard at the start, get that job, get that visa, and then, you know, yeah, after visa. that, yeah, the visa problem, hey? Yeah, visa problem. that's what I'm, because I want to really go to Japan, but it's just, you know, my I can't get the visa right now. Mm. So yeah. But do your best, do your best. Don't, don't give up. Yeah, I can have an idea. Don't throw in the towel. Yeah, don't throw in the towel.
Um, what 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 should I thought? Huh? Metabon. What this like? What's the wash lid? Like a little kind of shower kind of thing that do some like splash oh, in the toilet. In the toilet. Oh no no no. No, there's no such a thing as. Yeah, we don't have our, our toilets are just you know standard. Yeah, Put in our toilet, I, isn't it? I, I wish I had. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more clean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, hasn't hasn't come. We yet. don't have it, but maybe you can. I think you can order it from Japan, or you can like probably you probably buy it from Japan, eh? Mm-hmm. Okay. And will this video be posted on YouTube? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Mm-hmm. All right. Next question. How do you think about studying abroad after working about a few years? Yeah, I think that's okay. It's never too yeah, late okay. to yeah. It's never yeah. too late. Yeah, so definitely go check it out. Uh, Roxas and one, I think four, if, one, you six. Have, if you have three years work experience in a foreign country or in Japan, mm. I think you can get additional five points in getting a visa. Oh, okay. One eight nine visa. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is like a permanent residence. So, like, if you want to wow. get a permanent residence or uh, if you want to secure a visa to work here, right? Mm. I think having three years of experience in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, we do a bit of a trick. There we go. Mm -hmm. So that that's actually a benefit. Yep. Think of it as a as a pro, mm -hmm. as a positive. Yeah. Well, oh, 21. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Rupa sensei, what is that? Kawaii? Kawaii. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. How to perceive present perfect? Oh, the present perfect tense. So, so. Yeah. How, how to perceive? Perceive. So, how uh, what does that mean? Like, so I, how do, I, I know what perceive means. Like, so like, like how to, how to, do you mean how to study it, maybe? Especially for us, like how to perceive present perfect. Mm. Or pronouns? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know what he means. Okay, maybe, here. yeah, maybe how to, uh, how to, like, how to, how to study it, maybe is what he means? How to master how it. How to master it, yeah. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, practice. <laughs> I th especially with grammar. Mm. Yeah, like you just got to keep, I think, keep repeating it, you know, keep mm. as the more times you, you practice it, the more times you say it, and the more times you're challenged by it, the more times you'll remember it. So just keep trying, man. All right. What about you're going to have to help me out with these kanji here from um, she, she kiss 7.5 before I be T A K N E Q. Okay, yep. Mm. It'd be a bit difficult, you know, it'd, it'd be a bit easy for me, I think, you know. I, yeah, I would say IL 7.5 is the hardest. Oh, is, that, is the yeah, hardest? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. IELTS. Yep. More business language, is it? Which one? Uh, IELTS. IELTS. Or about the same? I think pretty much the same. I reckon Aiken Ikkyu yep. is much more academic. Academic? And it really? contains a number of like difficult vocabulary. Even yeah. native speakers wouldn't know. Yeah. So you have to learn a lot of things by heart. Yep. Like after memorizing lots of vocab, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. I yeah. show you what sort of vocabulary you're testing. Okay, well, we're going to get a first-hand example of how to how to master the Aiken exam. Are you guys ready? You too, are you ready? Let's do it. But yeah, so let's have a look. Yeah, at, have a look. Okay. So we talked a little bit about materials before, how to study English. And well, here's a good one. Uh, it's backwards, but words and phrases in context for Aiken Grade 1. All right, guys, are you ready? Oh, wow. What do you think about these words? These are some pretty, pretty advanced words. Okay. Mm. So it's, yeah, evolutionary. Congregate. What it has it? Shinkano. Shinkano. Yeah, these are some pretty uh, alienated. Alienated. Would you use that? No, so very academic words. Mm. Maybe yeah, if you're reading, courses. yeah, if you're reading someone's university PhD, you probably find a lot of these words. Mm. Probably don't even know a lot of these words, you know. <laughs> yeah, jubilant. Wow, culprit, embezzlement. Mm. Yeah, very difficult words. So, if you're studying for the 
Aiken grade one, good luck. Come out there. You'll need it. <laughs> yep. All right. Good. All right. I'm going to get distinction. Good, good, good. <laughs> distinction, okay. Uh, um, pronunciation, we talked a bit about that before. Just study mm-hmm. your phonetics, man, and you, you'll be good. Thanks heaps. For your reply. Yeah, good job, good job. I like the word heaps. Heaps, yeah, yeah. heaps. Thanks heaps. Means did very I, much. Yeah. Did you learn from you? Maybe. I don't think I've even done that word. Okay. Maybe that could be tomorrow's word, hey? Heaps. Heaps. So Aussie. Yeah, very Aussie, very yeah. Aussie. Thanks heaps, mate. Have a good one. I have a colleague from India and he speaks English, but I can't understand it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know used to, right? Yeah. I think, yeah, it's hard to, to have your, your study the, the basic English, or, mm-hmm. you know, like, as we said, American English, you know, stuff like that. Yep. Um, you know, English, English, Australian English, and then having those, you know, those kind of niche mm. Englishes, you know, like Indian English. Yep. You know, it, they, Is the same grammar and stuff like that, but it's just that pronunciation is a little mm. bit different. That that's one of your parents actually speaks. Yeah, my Indian, so my Indian yeah, English. so my dad yeah he speaks right. Indian English. Okay. So yeah, because he's born in India, raised mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. came here later. Yeah. So he he still speaks with an accent, but right. you can just ask them. Oh, we only have thirty minutes, thirty seconds left. Okay, oh, guys, thanks so much for. For, for joining in, make sure to check out Atsu's uh, Instagram, his YouTube. Mm. And guys, thanks so much for joining. Anything to say? No, that is all. Thank you so much for coming, guys. See you in the video I'm going to post on YouTube. Okay, guys, do one of these. Ready? Jariato! Bye. 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 Catch you later.